So I'll start by paraphrasing Vice President Joe Biden. And I'll tell you that uh, cybersecurity is a big deal. Um, in the past year, and unfortunately again just last week, we've too frequently seen organizations picking up pieces after yet another major cyber attack or breach. Uh, looking forward, what we need to do as a, as a government and as a private sector uh, is be proactive and disrupt these attacks before the damage is done and before the theft has occurred. Um, overall, cybersecurity is a big deal because all of our lives are enmeshed in the cloud. On mobile devices like my iPhone and my pocket, uh, we all live in cities with SCADA systems and the energy grid, in the public utilities, uh, and the public works. Increasingly, we have the Internet of Things in our very home. Cybersecurity is a big deal because by a very nature, cyberspace creates an expanded universe for opportunities uh, for what former director of National Counterterrorism Center, Michael Leiter, used to call micro actors with macro impact. Uh, and, and we saw that in the terrorism paradigm, and we're now seeing it evolve in the cybersecurity uh, paradigm as well. And while cyberspace has been identified as a major area of concern for the federal government for years, uh, the number and impact of recent attacks on major U.S. corporations has been widely reported only recently. Just last week, data theft from Anthem, uh, which is, I believe, by some accounts, the second largest health insurer, uh, may have compromised Social Security numbers and personal identifiable information for uh, upwards of uh, up to 80 million individual Americans, including their CEO, I believe. Um, so we've all seen high-profile cases of cyber theft. What's also happening is cyber espionage and cyber attack, where data is being destroyed uh, or stolen and used for national advantage. Uh, in federal agencies, financials, retail, uh, and now uh, entertainment at Sony and even insurance, um, the costs are enormous. Center for Strategic International Studies estimates uh, up to a half a trillion dollars almost every year lost in, uh, to society at large as a result of cybercrime. That's uh, more than a billion dollars a day. Now these threats come from a wide spectrum of attackers. Uh, just recently in 2014, we saw the Department of Justice move forward with indictments against uh, PLA Army nationals uh, for cyber espionage. Uh, on the national level, uh, the FBI made allegations that North Korea may have used national elements uh, in the attacks on Sony. Um, uh, on the other end of the small scale vandalism, uh, we saw ISIS militants uh, hacked a Twitter account of CENTCOM. Uh, so you see a wide variety of actors, and you also see a very broad spectrum of types of attacks. Malware is proliferating every day. The types of social engineering schemes that are used to, to uh, attack the human element of organizations is also increasing in sophistication. Um, and the one common characteristic of all of this is that the digital data sets from which all those threats emerge are absolutely enormous. The sheer scale and complexity of these structured and unstructured data sets coming together could either could, could drown or crush our cybersecurity analysts and our national security professionals, or we could find ways to harness that data, leverage it, and interpret it to yield actionable insight. Now, broadly as a nation, I think we've seen some significant hints at the kind of damage that can be inflicted. Uh, and we've got numbers to show that it is costing more than a billion dollars a day. But I'm very optimistic that as a nation, we've hit an inflection point with regard to cyberspace. I think what we do now is what we have always done as Americans when faced with an obstacle or a challenge. We'll find ways to innovate, work together, and leverage public and private sector resources to protect our commerce, our way of life, and our personal lives. Stakeholders from business and government are already thinking, acting, and adjusting as needed to reduce risks in cyberspace for Americans. In the past year, on the government side, the President acted decisively, took executive actions to help unite efforts to protect cyberspace for Americans by uh, coming out with a new executive order and a new policy framework, uh, empowering the Department of Homeland Security, identifying areas of critical infrastructure, and creating a NIST framework. Last week, the White House announced a new agency, the Cyber Threat Intelligence Integration Center. Now, CTIC, and I'm not sure that's what it's going to be abbreviated as, is fantastic. It's going to be built on the same model as the National Counterterrorism Center. And it could do for American security what NCTC did for counterterrorism intelligence. It's creating a central clearinghouse where analysts can leverage the work done at multiple agencies, bring it together, fuse it, and share it, hopefully as needed with government and also private sector entities that need to protect networks. But their work is cut out for them. Because if you want to find a needle in a haystack quickly or connect multiple needles in the same haystack, You'll need the whole haystack. And you'll need to exploit information in it. Uh, and from what I've read, CTIC is going to be a small agency with 50 employees. 
They'll be dedicated to leveraging the analysis of those other agencies. That means people will be working with volumes of data not in the, the megabytes or the gigabytes or even just a few terabytes at a single go, but they'll be working with hundreds of terabytes, perhaps even petabytes of analytical products and potentially raw source material. It's a big job. Uh, on the private sector side, uh, all of us as citizens need to empower the right team with the right tools and the right technologies. And all of us have a role to play in that. Uh, I can only speak from my own experience, but I, I really am overwhelmingly proud to say that I am now an IBMer. Uh, for more than 100 years, IBM has been solving the world's most challenging computing uh, process and data problems. And I'm really uh, honored to be part of that team with, with people like Bravo uh, and, and Matt and Jeremy. In the past year, IBM also made some significant announcements related to evolution and innovation for cybersecurity intelligence. One of which was the release of uh, what, would, what we've called Enterprise Insight Analysis. Uh, formerly, it was an internal initiative codenamed code Project Aurora. And Project Aurora was a next generation big data analytics program that pulled together resources from proven solutions for link analysis, artificial intelligence, identity resolution, and sense-making algorithms to provide a single user interface that simplifies extremely complex investigations for those analysts I was talking about at places like the Cyber Threat Intelligence Center or places like Department of Homeland Security uh, or our intelligence agencies in ways that protect privacy. Uh, so to give you a brief preview, uh, we'll play a video now. This is the part where I juggle. <laughs> Technology enables untold opportunities for consumers, for organizations, and for criminal exploitation. Because with technology comes a massive amount of disparate data. Data that criminals and perpetrators use to mask their identities and activities. How can organizations and agencies simplify trillions of disparate data points fast enough to identify actionable insights and act before perpetrators do? IBM helps you unleash the wealth hidden in big data. By automatically resolving seemingly unrelated entities 24-7. So you can run complex queries across hundreds of terabytes of data and apply three-dimensional, advanced analytics, all at the same time. An integrated system of insight that transforms data complexity into actionable intelligence within seconds. That's the power of Big Blue Innovation. That's the power of IBM i2. So obviously a technology solution uh, like I2 Enterprise Insight Analysis has many uses where insight needs to be deciphered from masses of seemingly disparate data. But given the cyber intelligence disciplines reliance upon extremely diverse structured and unstructured data sets, EIA will be especially valuable as it will empower fusion of the biggest, most complex sets in order to augment the best parts of human insight. It's going to deliver the power to act before a cyber attack is complete and before a data theft has occurred. It will transform the historical post-mortem analysis into a power that uh, empowers policy leaders to look at ongoing course of action analysis. It will generate options for organizations, whether they're governmental or in the commercial sector. And I think most importantly, because it runs at enterprise scale and with a speed that will reduce calculations that used to take hours or days, as recently as last year, into seconds and run them simultaneously. Uh, I firmly believe, and I say this as myself, that this is the kind of innovation that will allow nations and organizations to move their efforts from forensics and cleanup into the realm of what we'd call proactive defense that preempts, disrupts, or prevents attacks before they occur, before the damage is done and before the headlines are written. So I'll wind up where I started. Cybersecurity is a big deal because the stakes are high. All of our daily lives in this room are intrinsically linked 
It's technologies that put us at risk in cyberspace. It's undeniable. That inextricable link is exactly why we need smart, talented, and forward-looking professionals in the government, like Deputy Undersecretary Phyllis Schneck, with her current colleagues in leadership across government, and the yet-to-be-announced incoming team at the Cyber Threat Intelligence Integration Center. Along with the many thousands of civilians, soldiers, Marines, airmen, and law enforcement professionals who work every day to protect our nation and our network. So I want to thank all of our participants and everybody who's watching uh, on the streaming session, but I especially want to thank those professionals who've committed themselves to public service, whether they are in or out of uniform. Uh, and I'm available for questions after this event. Thank you, everybody.